Okay. So for today, we will be discussing or we will be continuing our previous discussion, uh, which is the forensic light sources. This is the lesson two of module two. So when we say forensic light sources, it a forensic light source is a crime scene investigators and laboratory technicians tool for enhancing observation, uh, photography, and collection of evidence, including latent fingerprints, body fluids, hair and fibers, bruises, bite marks, wound patterns, shoe and foot imprints, gunshot residues, drug traces, question documents, bone fragment detection, among many others. Pag sinabi natin forensic light sources, Ito yung ginagamit, katulad ng nabanggit dito, ng mga crime scene investigator, pati ng mga laboratory technician, para makita ang iba't ibang uri ng ebidensya. May mga ebidensya kasi na hindi mo kaagad na makikita gamit yung sarili mo lang or through your naked eyes. You have to use uh, certain light sources or forensic light sources. If you can remember our topic uh, last time, nabanggit natin, yung electromagnetic radiation. Hindi lahat ng electromagnetic spectrum, rather, ay nakikita ng tao. Dahil yung nakikita lang ng tao is yung visible light. So, all other types of light uh, that are not part of the visible light is, of, of course, not seen by any person. Kailangan mong gumamit ng special instrument para makita ang mga yon. Eh katulad ng mga to, yung mga nabanggit na uri ng ebidensya na to, makikita mo lang yung mga yan through, again, the use of forensic light sources. It provides more sensitivity than traditional methods, thus increasing the amount of evidence uncovered and the quality of the evidence photographed and collected. Kasi kung gagamitin mo nga lang yung naked eye mo, baka hindi mo pa makita yung ebidensya. Or, Kung makita mo man, baka hindi mo makuha na ng maayos na picture kung hindi ka gagamit ng mga ganitong uh, light sources. A forensic light source is made up of a powerful lamp containing the ultraviolet, visible, and infrared components of light. It then filters down the light into individual color bands or wavelengths that enhance the visualization of evidence by light interaction techniques during fluorescence kapag nagliliwanag yung evidence, through absorption, the evidence darkens, and oblique lighting. This is small particle evidence revealed. Pag oblique lighting, of course, gagamit ka ng light at itatapat mo yon sa ebidensya obliquely, paslant. Then may ma-uncover ma ka na details doon sa ating evidence. Then makukuha na mo na siya ng mas maayos na picture. So, one example of a forensic light source is this one. Uh, CS16 500, na 500 watts. It provides output in the UV and VIS and is available with optional IR or infrared radiation. It is continuously tunable, allowing for complete coverage of the spectrum. Ibig sabihin, lahat ng nasa electromagnetic spectrum ay masasakop nitong light source na ito. Gagamitan mo lang ng iba't ibang uri ng filters. Kaya malaki tulong yan. Kaya habang nagkokolekta ka pa lang ng ebidensya doon sa crime scene, nakikita mo na lahat ng ebidensya. Okay. Let's continue with sensitized material. This is the lesson 3 of module 2. Nabanggit natin to last time na there are two types of sensitized materials. Films and photo papers. So, uh, sensitized materials refers to films and papers that are composed of emulsion containing silver halide crystals suspended in gelatin and co coated on a transparent or reflective support. Yung mga binabanggit na yan ay yung parts or yung components ng isang sensitized material ng film at ng paper. So, dito muna tayo sa photographic film. So, film consists basically of a random scattering of light-sensitive silver halides suspended in a layer of animal gelatin, which is coated onto acetate, support, or 
based. Again, these are parts or layers of the film. Kung maalala ninyo yung topic natin sa history, uh, ito nga yung film. At ang tawag sa ganitong film is yung negative. Kasi nga, the color tones are reversed. Kung makikita ninyo dito ay darker compared to this part. Sa tunay na buhay or sa reality, this one is bright. Then this one has a darker shade. Malamang mga bahay at mga puno ito. So darker siya compared to the sky. Okay, at eto namang butas. Kung maaalala nyo rin yung topic natin sa history ng photography, these are called sprockets. Yan. Na ang naka-invento is si Oscar Barnack. Okay. Ito na, yung binabanggit kanina pa. The film structure. So, this is a structure of a black and white film. We have the top coating, the emulsion layer, the film base, and the anti-halation backing. So, dito mo na. Top coating or top layer. Obviously, syempre, nasa top yun. Top layer nga, di ba? So, ito yun. Okay. Highlight natin. So, dito, yan, yung linya na yan, yung top coating. Okay. Then, the emulsion layer is this one. Ito, emulsion. Dito, yung sinasabi na may uh, silver halide crystals. Diyan yun. Esa emulsion siya. And then, yung base, ito. Ito, yan. And then, the anti-halation backing is etong nasa pinaka dulo or pinaka bottom part ng isang film. Describe natin sila isa-isa. So when we say protective coating or the top layer, the top layer of the film protects the fragile emulsion. Pinoprotektahan daw ito. Yan yung emulsion. From human hands. Bakit? There is always an oily substance on skin that is that if transferred to the emulsion would effectively ruin the film. Kaya nga tayo nakakapag-iwan ng ating fingerprint sa mga uh, surfaces ng iba't ibang bagay kasi nga dahil doon sa oily substance ng skin natin, normal talaga yun na may nasisikrit yung ating skin. Kaya nga nakakapag-iwan tayo again ng mga fingerprint. At etong protective coating, yun ang purpose niya sa buhay. Protektahan yung emulsion. Okay. So, the protective coating also protects the emulsion from minor scratches and abrasions. The protective coating washes away during film processing. So, habang nagtitake ka ng pictures, habang yung film ay nasa loob ng camera, nandoon, nandoon pa ang protective coating or the top layer. Pero kapag dinevelop mo na siya, kapag binabad mo na siya sa iba't ibang uri ng chemical, mawawala yung protective coating. Okay. Ano ba yung pinoprotektahan nung top layer na yan? Bakit siya kailangang protektahan? The emulsion is the true heart of the film. It is the part of the film that records the image by physically reacting to light that reflects from the scene being photographed. It passes through the camera's lens and strikes the film. These are thin, gelatinous, light-sensitive coatings on film that react chemically to capture the color and shadings of a scene. In short, dun sa emulsion, nagre-record ng image. Kaya siya tinuturing na heart ng film. Okay siya yung tumatanggap ng siya yung unang tumatanggap ng light. Kaya nga sabi diyan, light sensitive din siya. Okay, again, it is the emulsion uh, basically responsible for recording the image taken by the camera. Emulsions are composed of light sensitive material suspended in a gelatin substance. Katulad ito. Ito, itong gelatin na sinasabi. etong mga puti dito, yan yung gelatin. Yung mga tuldok-tuldok na nakikita nyo dyan, yun yung silver halide grains. Okay. 
So only one emulsion is required for black and white photographs because it is the amount of light, not the color, that activates the chemical reaction. Of course, ibang usapan kapag colored film na. Okay, next is the film base. Ito yon. Okay. So, the film base is the thickest of the layers. It supports the other layers. Basically, it supports the emulsion. Plastic-based films are commonly called films, while paper-based films are called photographic papers. So, again, dalawa nga ang sensitized material natin, di ba? Film and photo paper. Kapag plastic-based, yun na yung film, yung nilalagay sa loob ng camera. Kapag paper-based naman, ito na yung photo paper, yung kung saan nililipat or uh, tinatapat yung ating negative film para maging positive image. Yung positive, yun na yung nasa photo paper. Polyester is a particularly suitable base for film because it is dimensionally stable. Uh, dimensionally stable materials do not appreciably change size when the temperature or moisture level of the film change. So, films are subjected to heated liquids during processing or the development process and to heat during use in graphic processes. Therefore, dimensional stability is very important for graphic communications photographers because their final images must always match the given size. Conversely, Paper is not dimensionally stable and is only appropriate as a film base when the photographic print is the final product. Doon kasi sa film, di ba, yung pinakaunang gamit ng film, yung nasa loob siya ng camera kapag nag-capture ng image. Then, ang sunod na proseso para ma-develop yung ating film is lalagyan siya ng iba't ibang uri ng chemical. O syempre, dahil nga chemical yon there is a certain uh, high temperature to it. Mas mainit siya. Then after that, itatapat mo pa siya ulit, ilalagay mo siya sa tinatawag nating projector. Tapos, uh, tsaka pa lang siya ma-co-convert into a positive image. Okay. And lastly, uh, is the anti-halation backing uh, from the word halo. Kaya anti-halation. Ibig sabihin, nilalabanan niya yung halo. It is the bottom layer of a sheet of film uh, which is a very dark colored material that prevents halation. Kaya nga siya anti-halation. This anti-halation backing, backing kasi siya yung nasa pinaka likod. Ito yun. Okay. This anti-halation backing prevents light from passing through the film and subsequently reflecting back up from any reflective surface under the film. If you can remember the medium of light. Merong transparent, translucent, and opaque. Pag transparent and translucent, light will be allowed to pass through. Light will transmit. Pero kapag opaque ang isang object, light will only be uh, absorbed. Sometimes reflected, but you, most of the time it's absorbed. Eh, dahil itong anti-halation backing, ang sabi nga, it is very dark colored. Which means that it is opaque. Kaya kapag tinanggap na ng film yung light, magsa-stop yung light doon sa anti-halation backing, hindi siya tatagos doon sa parte ng camera. Hanggang doon lang siya sa film. Okay. Okay. Um, the light traveling at an unwanted angle would expose halos, hence the name halation, around existing images. The dark colored material absorbs any light that penetrated the film, thus preventing the light from reflecting and thus and causing halation. The anti-halation backing is washed away during film processing. Okay. So, dalawa ang naaalis kapag 
nagkakaroon or nag undergo ng development process ang film. Nawawala yung top coating, yung top layer or yung protective film, pare-parehas lang yon and the anti-halation backing. Ibig sabihin, ang natitira sa film kapag na-develop na is the emulsion layer and the film base. Okay. Uh, film structure naman ng colored film kasi kanina nabanggit natin is the black and white film only. So, top layer, same as with sa black and white. Emulsion layer, eto ang pinagkaiba. Sa emulsion layer ng black and white film, isa lang. Pero ang emulsion layer ng colored film, it's uh, it has blue, yellow, green, and red. And then, of course, meron ding film base and anti-halation backing. The top layer is sensitive to blue light only. Green and red light passes through it without exposing the color halide. Then the emulsion layer. Color film requires three layers of emulsion, each of which is sensitive to only one of the primary colors of light, blue, red, or green. As light passes through the layers, each emulsion records areas where its particular color appears in the scene. When developed, the emulsion releases dye that is the complementary color of light recorded. Uh, blue light activates yellow dye, green light uh, activates magenta, and red light activates cyan. Complementary colors are used because they produce the original color of the scene when the film is processed. Okay? So, yun na nga, blue filter... Yellow, green, and red. So green filter is a layer that is orthochromatic. That this is the layer sensitive to blue uh, and green light and not to red light. And then the red filter is a panchromatic layer sensitive to blue and red. So exposure is made simultaneously in three layers. Each layer corresponding to only one of the additive primary colors. After exposure and during the film processing, the yellow color of the filter layer is destroyed. Okay. So, laging nandyan ang, ang yellow filter which is ultimately destroyed after the development process. But the main layers are yung primary colors natin. Yung RBG, red, blue, and green. Okay. So, dito tayo sa typology of films. So, classification of films according to its use. We have black and white film. Then, we also have color film. Films that have names ending in color. Color negatives for prints. The negative in this type of film is divided into blocks and is color positive. It is composed of hue dyes. Then we also have chrome films. Kapag ang mga film ay nagtatapos sa chrome, yung pangalan nila. It is used for color transparency slides. Films that are exposed by slides mounted in a cardboard for slide projectors. And then we have x-ray film. Familiar naman kayo dito. Films that are sensitive to x radiations only. Kaya nga iba yung film na ginagamit kapag nagpapa-x-ray tayo. Hindi rin... Uh, kaparehas ng camera na ginagamit natin sa everyday lives natin, yung camera used for uh, taking pictures of your bones. Yun, for x-ray. Okay. Next type is types based on film speed. Kung gaano kabilis mag-record or according to light sensitivity. First is fast film. Obvious naman kung ano yan. Mabilis siyang mag-record. This contains numerous numbers of large grains of silver halides that usually develop in groups. These are film that are very sensitive to light. When the available light is dim, this type of film is best because of the low reflection power of the subject against a background. It is low in contrast but high in brightness. It has a grainy result. So, when we say fast film, obviously, again, this is a film that records very fast. Kaya, ang resulta niya is grainy. Pag sinabi natin grainy, kung maalala ninyo yung mga uh, first camera phones, kapag nagpicture ka, 
parang may mga parte na pixelized. Kung i-compare mo yon sa film, parang ganun din na may mga maliliit na grains nga. Kaya grainy ang result. Yun yung term natin. Grainy. Okay. It is low in contrast but high in brightness. That is fast film. Okay. Kabaligtaran niya is slow film. Film that requires longer period of time to completely expose their emulsion to light. Film with fine grains of silver highlights. Kapag matagal mag-record, grainy. Ah, sorry. Kapag matagal mag-record, fine grains siya. Okay. Fast film has grainy result. Slow films has fine grains na resulta ng image. Okay. Kasi nga, dahil, uh, isipin nyo na lang na dahil mabagal siya, parang ninamnam niya yung light. Kaya na-process niya ng maigi, kaya mas maayos o mas malinaw yung pictures na nakukuha niya. Hindi katulad nito. Kung baga parang sipin nyo na lang na basta nakapag-record lang, pwede na yun. Kaya naging grainy yung result. Okay. So, film speed is an emulsion's degree of sensitivity to light and determines the amount of exposure required to photograph a subject given the lighting conditions. The manufacturer of the film assigns a standardized numerical rating in which high numbers correspond to fast emulsions and low numbers to small ones. The standards set by the International Standards Organization or the ISO are used throughout the world. The first number of an ISO rating represents an arithmetic measure of film speed whereas the second number represents logarithmic measure. Ibig sabihin, dun kasi sa ating camera, may ISO setting na tinatawag. May katapat na number yon. At yun ay, of course, sinet nga ng ISO o ng International Standards Organization. At may katapat nga raw na meaning yung numbers na nasa ISO rating. Okay. So, eto yon yung mga low speed na films these are ISO 25 over uh, 15 to ISO 121 then medium speed films yan 125 22 224 fast speed and then super fast films are 400 over 27 okay another type types of films based on Spectral sensitivity naman. Uh, ito yung kulay. So, responsiveness of the film emulsion to the different wavelengths of light sources, that's the definition of spectral sensitivity. So, first is monochromatic film. Film that is sensitive to a single color of light only. Kaya nga siya monochromatic. Mono means one. Isa lang. So, first is blue sensitive film. A film specially treated that makes it more sensitive to blue rays of light. Another one is ultraviolet sensitive film. This is sensitive to UV rays only. Then we have panchromatic film. Kanina mono, isa lang. Pag panchromatic naman, pan means all, so lahat ng colors. Sensitive to ultraviolet rays and all light found in the visible spectrum. So all colors especially to blue and violet light. It is suitable for general use in the preparation of black and white photography because it produces the most natural recording of colors. So we have process panchromatic film. This permits short exposure under average lighting condition and has the advantage of fine grain structure. We also have grain panchromatic film and high-speed panchromatic film designed originally for photographing objects under adverse lighting condition. And we have orthochromatic film. So, film that is sensitive to UV rays, blue and green colors, but not to red. Red portions are recorded as dark tones, while green and blue parts appear as light tones when printed. This is popular in the market as codalith film. Then we have infrared film. 
This is a special type of film that is sensitive to infrared and ultraviolet radiation. It is also sensitive to all the colors found in the visible spectrum. Uh, infrared film is useful in penetrating haze because of its longer wavelength. Kung maalala nyo rin yung uh, lighting conditions na napag-usapan natin last time. Merong hazy sunlight, di ba? Kung hazy sunlight, maganda na gumamit ng infrared film. Kumbaga parang ma mahahawi niya yung haze. Ganun ang dating. Kaya kapag nagpicture ka, parang walang haze pag gumamit ka ng infrared film. So, this is uh, katulad lang nung kanina, film speed. So, emulsion speed, the sensitivity of film to light. Basta kapag pinag-usapan natin yung emulsion, dahil uh, ito nga yung part ng film na, na, na responsible for recording images, it is the one responsible or the one that is sensitive to light. Okay. So, pag sinabing emulsion speed, kung gaano kabilis nagre-record yung ating film. So, ISO 25, slowest speed that natural condition will permit. It is the best uh, for best color and sharpness. ISO 100 to 200 is for general purpose. So, 100 is a slow speed film. It needs sufficient light and low shutter speed. It has fine grains of silver halides. It produces sharp image. Then ISO 200 is twice as fast and as sensitive as 100. It has large grains and produce large sharp image. Then we have ISO 400. For dim light or with moving subject, uh, ISO 1000 and up. For extremely low light conditions or fast or for fast moving objects. Kapag nag uh, pipicture ka ng mga gumagalaw, nyare sa sakyan o kaya mga tao sa isang busy street, kailangan mas mataas yung ISO mo. Okay. Okay, that's it for this uh, lesson.